Hello there, just to explain where I am today. As you can tell, from the sweat on my brow and the sun in the sky, I'm not in England. I'm in Portugal on my family holiday and this morning I couldn't sleep very well so I thought I would have a few hours metal detecting. So I came out about four o'clock. Unfortunately the tide was coming in so I was restricted to more or less the high tide mark. But um, still did pretty well. There was a big cut had opened up since the day before. Approximately 18 inches, possibly two feet in certain parts, and it had taken a lot of sand off one half of the beach and dumped it on the other side. Obviously, I didn't want to be where the sand was all dumped. I wanted to be where it had been taken away. So that's what I was hunting this morning. And this is how I got on. Now I'm filming quite a long way up from the beach because the waves are absolutely crashing down there. I don't think I'll be doing much talking in this video, but I can take this opportunity while it's fairly quiet up here to talk about the ATX. You're obviously going to see me using it and you're going to see what I've found with it. It's an excellent, excellent machine for the beach. I actually would have preferred to be in the water and I, in my ignorance, I didn't realise that Portugal had such big tides. I thought it was like Mallorca where the, the tidal range was about six inches, you know, and I could get under the water, there wouldn't be any big crashing waves. And I could really get amongst where the, the, the heavier things are, like the rings and so on, where people actually swim. Unfortunately, I was restricted to the beach, which I don't normally like hunting because you feel like a bit of a scavenger. Whereas in the water, you feel like an adventurer. In the, on the beach, you're basically just hunting for things that people have left behind. You know, you might as well be going through the bins. It's, uh, it's not my cup of tea, but I've got the machine for it. And I really, really enjoy using it, even if it is on the beach. I love it underwater, though. Definitely better underwater. Next holidays, I think we are going to Mallorca. And with that tiny little tidal range, really calm sea, this will be the daddy. I have done a brief review on this before, but um, I just wanted to explain about some of the signals. A lot of the coins that I've been digging are really made of absolute rubbish. There's a lot of iron in them, you know? So they would read very, very low if I was using the E-Track or, or the Deus or indeed the CTX 3030. On this, the tend to just all give a good signal. But I did find that the iron check on this was working very well with the bigger items. So when I was getting a good signal, what I was doing, I was cross-checking it by stepping 90 degrees, going over it, just to check that I had a decent two-way signal. And then I was hitting the iron check button, holding that until it beeped, going over. If it made a crackling sound, it was obviously iron. I did dig a few targets just to check, and they were iron. So it did work. It doesn't work for the tiny little pieces, though. Um, and you've got to go very, very slow when you're doing the iron check as well. I found if you just blast over it, it still gives a good signal. If you go that little bit slower, you can hear that crackling. And that crackling means it's iron, just don't dig it. So, good signal, iron check. If it wasn't obvious iron, I was then holding this button, which is the pinpoint. Pinpointing it, which is exceptionally accurate. That's bang in the middle of the coil here. And simply digging down with this, which I bought off eBay. The fella makes these. I cannot remember his name. If I can find where I bought it from, I'll put the link in the video description. But this is absolutely excellent. Very, very strong. And I was literally just digging it out, going over it with this. And then when I confirmed that I'd actually dug the target out and it was lying in a pile of sand, I was going over with this fella. The Pro Pointer AT from Garrett. So this is really what you need for beach detecting. But if you're detecting in very, very wet sand or in water, switch it on in the wet sand or in the water away from your target. It'll balance itself and then you can find your target. If you switch it on in the air, then go into the sea or then go into a wet hole, it'll, it'll fire off all over the place and you won't be able to find your target. So as long as you use this right, it helps you find your target very, very easily. I'll put the link to this in the video description. Ah, actually one thing I forgot to mention, is the headphones. These are underwater grey ghost headphones. Very, very comfortable. They really clamp on your ears. They keep all the ambient noise out. So you're just listening to what the machine is telling you. Very, very expensive set of headphones. They're, they're more than some people would pay for a detector, but they're definitely worth it if you're going to do the beach. And certainly if you're going to be underwater. I can't fault them. 
We've got a volume control as well, just set that to your preferred hearing level. And you're away, totally waterproof. Under the water, they give cracking sounds as well. So there's a trifecta of awesomeness. We've got the Garrett ATX, the Garrett Pro Pointer AT, and also the headphones from Grey Ghost Amphibian. Unfortunately, when I arrived at this beach, the tide was about halfway out, and I thought it was actually on its way out. I was thinking, get in there, I'm gonna be able to get way out. But it was on its way in. However, there was a deep cut on one half of the beach that was well worth working and it produced a hell of a lot of coins unfortunately no jewelry at all no rings nothing just coins and the normal crap that you dig on beaches all around the world now, i generally don't bother with beaches in the uk because they get absolutely pounded by everybody detecting is very very popular in the uk and really it's a lot of the time it's a waste it's, it's it's much better detecting the inland. But obviously there's folks that kind of get permission, they've got to detect the beach. Um, and some people actually like detecting the beach. You need, do need a proper tool for it, there's no point going with a, something that's only good in dry sand because you're not gonna find the good finds. But um, in the right conditions, even in the UK, the beach can be a reasonable place. So certainly don't rule it out. I live a long way inland. I much prefer to be up in the hills detecting proper history. But um, if you like the beach, by all means, go ahead. Two euros. Definitely want to take it off the beach. Horrible. Hey, another Euro. <laughs> Tiny little one cent. Look at that fella, what a beast, looks like he's on his way back to the sea. According to my camcorder here, it's 7.26. That means I've had about ooh, 
three and a half hours at it. And this is the rubbish that I've dug. It's a hell of a lot of tiny little screw ends or ends of nails or little shafts of some spinners or something. The obligatory bottle caps, you can't avoid digging them. Bits of thick wire and fishing implements, as well as a hell of a lot of hair slides as well. To be honest, they're all things that I would have dug with an e track. Um, you know, you could say, oh, I don't dig iron, but quite often you do dig iron. You know, these give tricky signals, and to get those deep, good finds, you've got to dig those tricky signals. So the ATX did pretty well. And there's also three fairly big and exceptionally sharp barbed fish hooks. They're going to go in the bin as well. And here's the coinage. I haven't counted it up, but there's quite a lot of euros and half euros there. Um, there's a two euro piece. Uh, plenty of 50 cents, 20s, 10s, practically every denomination apart from a note, obviously. And that's a reasonable return for about three and a half hours. Hell of a lot of signals and a lot of good digs. I didn't do a very good job of pinpointing this one, it was actually in the side wall. And this is the imprint from it. Now the relief on it, uh, i.e. the detail, seems to be quite good on whatever it is in there. I can't read what it says, and it seems to be copper because it's got a bit of a, a greeny tinge there. But um, that's the coin or whatever it is, possibly a token or something, in there. side we've just about got Britannia with a date along the bottom which is unreadable but on this side we've got George the third with a little wreath on his head it's not very easy to see that uh, but there's writing around the side that says Georgius third it's a uh, George the third half penny this one was reading 1530 and by the looks of it was approximately four inches deep it was a lovely clean signal. Oh, it's a button. I was just about to say that looks to me like a very worn farthen. It's pretty much the same size as a farthen, but it's a button. Yeah, that's about nine inches, and that was given a fairly good signal. Uh, a little bit jumpy. But um, it's definitely a diggable signal. I think it was reading about 1522 or thereabouts. And there it looks like we've got a really, really old key, or at least part of a one. I'd love to be able to find the other bit of that. Although it looks like that's been lost a long time ago. That's quite a nice find. It's certainly very, very old. This was a decent signal. I've just um, pulled that out which isn't the coin, but you can see that there's like a coppery mark left there. So the coin is somewhere in there. That's yeah, quite small. That gave a cracking signal. And mind you, it was only, I don't know, three, four inches down, and possibly five, if you're feeling extremely generous. And I don't think we're going to get an ID on that. It's very, very thin, so it may even be... Well, it may even be a hammered copper coin. Just with the thinness of it. I'm feeling that it's possibly like a Georgian farthen or something. But it's not particularly round. Well, that's it after a good rubbing on my trousers. And we're still no closer to the truth, unfortunately. It's possibly a hammered copper, but it's more likely just something like a Georgian farthen that's extremely degraded. Now, just for reference, if you've got an E-Track or a CTX 3030, that was reading pretty much in the middle of the top right quarter of the screen. It was quite a jumpy signal, but it looked to be fairly badly orientated and very badly decomposed as well. Now, this one was reading 1518. You can actually still see the mark on the screen there. And considering it's coming from a place which is just near where I found a Queen Anne groat one time, um, this is merely feet away, so I'm very, very hopeful for this one. It's in here, whatever it is. So let's take a look. Oh, man. 
it's a button. A little coppery button. This was a gigantic signal. Even 12.42. And we've got a buckle, or at least a part of a buckle by the looks of it. Yeah, it's missing the pin, but that gave an absolutely screaming signal. I thought that was the bottom of a coke can or something, the way that went off. It's quite difficult to see the screen here because of the light, but uh, I'll try and show you where this is hitting. There you go, it's hitting round about here. It's a little bit of a tricky signal, but it is in a field where I've found hammered coins before. So it's going to get dug. I think I'll be brave and give this one a live dig as well. <laughs> Curse of the live dig, it's a button. This was an extremely jumpy signal. I think it was roughly 1238, but it was bouncing all over the place. If I had to narrow it down, I would say 1236, 1238 maybe. That's normally where half pennies or pennies hit. And despite the gold glint on there, I don't think it's a gold coin somehow. No. Nope. It's a button. A degraded, gilded button. Just found a Georgian hairpenny from about ooh, six feet away from this particular hole. This one hasn't come out of here. And as you can see, that's quite a depth. It's probably about hmm, nine, ten inches maybe. Uh, but what's come out of here looks and feels like a spindle whirl. And it's, it is a spindle whirl, and it's a beauty. It's been a long time since I found one of these. And that's a belter. An absolute belter. I've clipped it a little bit with a spade, unfortunately. But that's the crappy side. That's the good side. And that good side looks very good. I'll give it a bit of a clean up and we'll have a better look at it. There you go. The trick is with these, just to give them a rub, either with your fingers or on your trousers, don't try and scrub them clean. It will just make them go one colour and the, that colour will be just... Well, there'll be no detail on it. It'll just be shocking if you do that. Just give it a rub. Highlight the detail that's on it, and that's what you'll be left with if you've got a nice patterned one. It's absolutely beautiful. Excellent example.